Hello, and welcome to this video on filling in the content of your scientific CV. If you want a bit more information on how to choose the structure of your CV or how to organize your CV, you can check out our previous video in this series. The link is going to be below. So in this video, we're going to talk about filling in the key information in your CV from that structured fixed information to those really varying bullet points that give a bit more information. I'm going to give you some tips and strategies to do this and discuss how to make it specific and how to make it your own, which is what's really going to help your CV stand out. So without further ado, I am Casey Butler. This is Butler SciComm. This is our second video on writing your scientific CV. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to catch the two other videos that are coming in this series, one on formatting your CV and one on all of those extras that are going to help make your job easier and help make your CV really stand out from the crowd. So first, when you start into the body of your CV, the first thing that I want you to do, and this is going to be the easiest thing, is to get down those fixed facts. This is going to be those things that are constant, that are not going to change, that you just need to fill in. These facts are going to include schools you attended, uh, the locations, the dates. It's going to include degrees that you earned, maybe something like the title of a thesis. Then it's going to include all of your different positions your research positions, including your location, the PI, the position that you held, the dates you were there, teach positions, including where you were teaching, if you were teaching under somebody, or maybe the classes that you taught along with the dates, any other relevant work experience with the company name, the position title, dates you were there, and then all of that information that just takes a little bit of time to look up, like any presentations that you gave, any conferences that you attended, and then all of your publications with the full citation to include on your CV. You don't want to forget any prizes or awards that you won, especially funding awards. It's always great to highlight that you are able to get funding to help indicate that you're going to be able to get more funding in the future. So when you first start with your CV, when you first start filling in the relevant information, it's a great idea to just get all of this stuff down. This is going to be stuff that you might be distracted by having to look up or find a date or find an exact title of something. So get all this information, get all this down before we move on to brainstorming what you're going to put under each one of these different points. So next we're going to move on to the bullet points. So a lot of your different sections, usually your work positions, are going to have a set of bullet points under them that are going to highlight your specific responsibilities and achievements that you held in these positions. This is going to usually apply to any research experience you have, teaching experience, uh, work experience, things like that, this is where you're going to put these key bullet points. And so what we want to make sure we cover with these bullet points are first details about this position that you had. Here you want to make sure that the reader is going to have a good idea when they read this of basically what your experience there was, what your responsibilities were, essentially what role you were playing in this. If it can be potentially obvious from the title, such as postdoctoral researcher, then maybe you don't have to elaborate on it so much, but very often it is a good idea to have some kind of thing here as a bullet point of what your responsibilities were in this position, especially if there's anything about it that is non-traditional for your job title. This is also where you really want to highlight what you achieved in this position. So anything you produced, any of your achievements, things like that, all should be listed in bullet points here underneath this position. So we're going to start by brainstorming. So I'm going to give you a set of questions here that I want you to go through for every single position you held to try to get an idea of the type of information or how much information to convey for each one of these different positions. So first, ask yourself, what were the project goals and objectives? And then ask yourself, were they reached? Next, what were my responsibilities in this position? What skills did I acquire in this position? What successes did I have in this position? What did I overcome? It's always great to indicate anything, any challenges that you had to overcome in a position. So make sure you think about any of those. What is the main takeaway or main point about this position that is going to help me in this application? And then as a key point here, what exact numbers can I highlight? So here you want to think of things like maybe number of mentees, number of publications, number of conferences attended, amount of money raised, 
something like that. Anything that where you can get to a number, even if it's a number of compounds synthesized. Come up with specific exact numbers. These are really helpful in making your CV convincing. So while you're in this brainstorming stage, try to think of any specific numbers you can come up with for this position. Now that you have a brainstormed list, what we are going to do is put these into specific action points. And so what, we're, what we want is for each one of our bullet points in each one of these positions to be a specific action towards essentially a specific goal or a specific achievement. We're gonna make these action words and action phrases and that's what's gonna help your CV stand out and help make it more engaging. So we really want to make sure we pay attention to this. And so instead of writing bland and passive sentences, we're going to write active sentences that are gonna be much more exciting and much more engaging. It's always easy to just Google a list of action words for CVs to help you come up with a list. But if you want a science oriented one, I did find this nice list from the MIT Career Advising and Professional Development page. It is a PDF. Uh, I'm gonna have a link below on the video that you can use. It was gonna give you some uh, key action verbs for very specific parts of your CV. So I find that this is helpful in helping me start to think about and set up and structure bullet points in a CV. And so what you want to do here then is take all of that information that we just brainstormed in the previous exercise and try to convert that instead of whatever little note you have brainstormed into an action point. So you want to use action words like developed or taught or researched or created, something like that that gives an idea of what you did in this position. So to give an example of this, I'm gonna put some points up here on the screen for you. One is from my old CV, and this one gives a rather boring, rather bland statement. Um, and I'm gonna compare that then to what I edited for future CVs according to the structure that I'm giving you here of action verbs for solving specific goals. So my first example from my original CV says, one bead, one compound peptide library screening for antibody-like detection agents for various diseases. So a couple of problems here. First, one bead, one compound screening is not something that everybody is going to know. So unless you are specifically in screening technology, this is going to be a very technical CV. And it also, this point, doesn't tell you anything about my role here. It doesn't tell you what I did at all. It doesn't tell you anything that I accomplished, anything that I specifically did. This is a very bland statement. And so I changed it to two separate points. The first, designed and synthesized antibody-like peptides for the early detection and treatment of cancer and malaria. So here first, you know exactly what I did because I designed and I synthesized. Now I also, if you noticed, took one bead one compound and I made it into something that is a little bit more understandable for everybody, antibody-like peptides. And so this helped make a very technical term more accessible. And then I made it much more specific. Instead of saying various diseases, I say for cancer and malaria, which is much more specific than literally any diseases. Also, in my brainstorming of key points from this project, I realized that this project had a lot of patents and a lot of publications from it. And so I made the second point developed effective rapid screening methodology that became the core technology still used by the lab, resulting in two patent filings, eight high-level publications, and an immense expansion of the project. And so this is because the work I did had such a profound impact on the, the methodology used by the lab for all future generations of this project. It was a good idea to put solid numbers in my CV and make that really stand out to show just how many publications and patents came from this work. If you're brainstorming and you're trying to write these in different ways, keep every version of this. Okay, so when you're going through and you're making these different points, keep multiple different versions of these points because it's very possible that you might be applying to a different type of job at some point in the future where you're going to want your focus written a little bit differently. So when you're going through and you're writing these different points, don't be so strict about yourself to find the one exact perfect way to write it. There might actually be a couple different pretty good ways to write it and you can keep a lot of those different options and maybe adapt later in the future or pick and choose between them when you need to apply to a specific position. So the next point that I want to make so clear that I'm making it its own section, even though I've already talked about it a little bit, is use specific numbers. And so with the example that I showed you before, I took a very bland statement and then I changed it into a statement that had very specific numbers of the number of patents and publications that came from this work. Specific numbers are very convincing. They help show that you're not just 
making stuff up, that you're not just hand wavy saying, oh, we did really good. Give people specific numbers. This helps them orient themselves. This helps place your CV in the context of other CVs. Whenever possible, use specific numbers. This is much more convincing. This is a much more engaging way to write a CV. Any specific numbers you can think of. Like I said before, think about publications and patents, sure, but also be creative. How many people did you mentor? How much funding was raised for this project? Things like that. Anywhere where you can come up with a number, try to come up with a number, try to integrate it into your CV. And then finally, if you learned nothing else from this video, I hope that you learned this point and this point only, and that is to take your CV and make it yours. <laughs> so what do I mean by that? When I say make it yours, after every single point that you have written for your CV, I want you to read that point and I want you to estimate how many people in the world that point would apply to. And then I want you to see if you can take that point and edit it such that it would apply to a much smaller number of people and you get absolute bonus points if you can make that point apply to you and you alone. What this little exercise is going to do is first, you want this to be about you. You want this specific to you because this is your CV. You want this to be very focused on you and your achievements and what you did. But the reason that I actually put this in here is this is the best exercise I've ever found for having people make their CVs specific because what you want is specific. Think of my example before where I said against various diseases where it could have just changed that to, to malaria because that was much more specific and it is what we were working on. And so go through your CV, go through every one of your points and try to make it as much about you as possible and as little about anybody else. This is also going to help you here to make your CV stand out. When somebody is reading tons of CVs back to back over and over again, they can start to sound really repetitive and things aren't going to stand out. If you can make your CV stand out, and a great way to do that is by making it so specific to you, it's going to be a CV that sticks in the minds of a hiring manager a lot longer. So definitely work on making it about you in every place possible. Okay, so that's what I have for you in filling in the body of your CV. I know that it seems like this is gonna take a lot of work and that's because it actually is. Writing your CV is not something where you can sit down in an hour and turn out a CV, especially when you're making first drafts. This is something that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And if you are spending whole afternoon sitting down in front of your computer trying to get a perfect CV like this, don't stress you are not the only one out there. And that is a part of the process. I promise you're only really going to have to do this the one first time when you make your full CV. And after that, if you just update it later, it is going to be much easier. But don't be too hard on yourself if this is taking you a long time. Writing your CV is a very important part of your professional development. And so don't be afraid to take as much time as you need to make a CV that you are happy with. And then if you want more information on formatting your CV or what to do after you have a draft of your CV, make sure that you subscribe to my channel so you can get the next two videos in this series when they come up. So that's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one on formatting your CV. And until then, happy writing.